quiet on the set. Camera speed. Sound production, take one. Start. Hello guys, welcome back to another exciting series of Career Advice. So before we start, there is an announcement. There is a happy thing that our total views cross 13,000 plus. So thank you all of you for all your love and support. Within a short span of time, we have crossed 13,000 plus views. So with this happy news, there is another happy news as well that we are going to start another series called SAP ISU FICA. So this is going to be an advanced concepts of SAP ISU. So those who haven't watched the SAP ISU basic series, so please watch. The link is given below in the description. You can go and check the SAP ISU series first, then come back and watch this SAP ISU FICA series. Okay. And with that, without wasting time, let's directly jump to the class. Thank you. So <clears throat> when we are discussing about the utility, Actually, what is utility? So utility is mostly divided into two, two types of utility, public utility and private utility. So when we discuss about private utility, it is the consumption items like oil, uh, your food items, paste, everything is comes under utility, which is useful for our daily uses. Similarly, when we discuss about the public utility, these things are the most essential part of our life. Like without that, we can't leave. So that's how we make that as a utility. And that is we called as the public utility. And um, genuinely in each country, there will be a uh, ministry for the East utility department. Like we have telecom department, water resources department, IT, all those comes under utilities. So mostly in our SAP ISU, we cover these eight sectors or business areas in utility. So basically we are covering the electricity, gas, water, multimedia, district heating. District heating is mostly useful in the cold countries where they are using the heating to live in a house because the temperature is very low outside. So they use the district heating. And for district heating, what they do, they supply the gas and the hot water. And for that, they charge. So that's how it is called the district heating. Then we have telecommunication. Uh, Manas is in that telecommunication segment, which is almost mature in, in India and the other sectors. But with the introduction of 5G, probably there will be new changes going to introduce in that sector. And that will impact in the solution in SAP as well. Then waste management. Waste management is again of two types. One is like solid waste management. Uh, mostly we call it as waste management. And the waste management related to the water, that is waste water management. So these eight segments mostly covered by SAP IAC. But with, uh, with enhancement of the... Uh, um, broadband and uh, with multiple set up set up box the internet connectivity okay that comes under multimedia as well and the tv connections also comes under multimedia that is also part of sap isc so but all these uh, utility se segments have actually a value chain which start with production like if we consider the electricity electricity as a unity where we generate the energy. So that unit or generation units, mostly we call the production or generation. So now once we generate the energy, we need to transport that energy to the distribution segment. So for that, we need a transmission unit. So you can see here, the generation happened in the generation unit, electricity generation, it transmitted and it come to the distribution unit. So once it's available at the distribution unit, it will sell to the retailers, okay? And retailers sell it to the consumers. So again, consumers is mostly of three types. Uh, business consumers, which is again divided business and industrial consumers and domestic consumers. Again, for domestic consumers, there may be different types of consumers, high consumption, low consumption like that. There will be different consumers. In business side, again, we have different consumers based on the 
consumptions. But mostly, we have this value chain that will be generation unit, transmission unit, distribution unit, then retailer and consumer. So the best part of this is that we can implement SAP ISU in all the segment, in generation, in transmission, in distribution, and for the retailers as well. Okay. So similar things is happening for the gas as well. So if you consider the natural gas, the natural gas production is happening in mostly in gas mines. So they generate there. Okay. Then they transmit to the storage units and from the storage, they transport it to the distribution unit and from there to the retailers. Okay. Like in India, we have uh, Bharat Petroleum, which is doing all the stuff. And there are three retailers like Indian Gas, uh, then Bharat Gas and Hindustan Petroleum like that. Three retailers are there. Uh, slowly, slowly the private players introduced like Reliance is there, HP is there. So all these are for gas segment. Similarly for water segment, we are mostly collect the water or water production is happening from the rivers. From there we transport to the treatment storage units where we put some minerals, we remove some <clears throat> minerals and we make it clean and uh, observable and then transport to the uh, distribution unit and from there to retailer and consumers. But <clears throat> when we are discussing this is for the perspective of the utility, we can consider that there would be three segments always in any of the utility segment. So generation, transmission, and distribution. But most of these companies, like in Indian companies, they work at the segment of the retailer or distribution segment. There are very few transmission companies. Like if I consider the Ireland where I currently working, so for them, there are a lot of generation units, like 122 generation units are there, and they are linked to a transmission unit. But the transmission unit is a single transmission unit. So most of the countries having a single transmission unit and from that transmission unit, the distributors get the energy. So more this transmission unit is an infrastructure by which we are generating, uh, we are transporting the energy from the generation unit to the distribution unit. Okay, so like in UK also, we have around 128 uh, retailers uh, like N Power, EDF Energy, a lot of distributors are there, but the transmission unit is only one, that is National Grid. And similarly, there are a lot of generation units, more than 236 something generation units are there. They're integrated with the transmission unit, from transmission units to distribution units. Now, there is a peculiar thing re related to the retailers. Retailers, they don't generate, they don't distribute. They only sell the energy to the consumers, okay? So retailers these days are very high in number because the retailer license people are getting very easily from the government, particularly from the deregulated government. And what they do, they're just uh, res responsible for the uh, collection and charging of the energy. So they mostly collect the uh, invoice amounts and they charge to the uh, end customers okay and then they pay back to the distributor okay so that's how the whole process is going uh, like unbundling like slowly slowly the people are coming into this whole value chain and the business is growing up we can give the example of the telecom segment in india so previously it was only owned by the state which is BSNL and uh, MTNL. But with deregulation of the market, the autonomy slowly, slowly uh, decreased and unbundling happening. And that's how the new players introduced, mostly like uh, you have Reliance uh, and uh, Airtel. There are a lot of other uh, players introduced and they are become the distribution and retailers. Okay, so, uh, but whenever there will be deregulation, there will be regulatory body always there which will control the whole system. So in India for telecoms communication, we have TRI, which control right. all these 
uh, rules and regulations. Okay, so deregulation is the new term we can say it's not new but from 2005 onwards it mostly in European countries mostly in Middle East countries they started going to deregulation. India is going to deregulation slowly. There are different projects currently in Maharashtra there are two three private players like Tata Power, uh, Reliance Power and um, Mahanagar Nigam uh, Power Limited which is a government owned power company. So they are providing the energy and people have the options to choose. Now, whenever there is a deregulation happen, the di diversification is happening and the, the uh, what we called, uh, the, the competition in, increased. And that creates a business opportunity like for SAP, ISU people. So you can see the trading, whatever I explained to you, generation to transmission to distribution and slowly, slowly go to the customer services and billing. So this retailer segment mostly we cover in SAP ISU, but as I mentioned, we can implement the ISU solution in all the segments, okay? <clears throat> so if we go in more deeper, we can understand the Genco, which is generation corporations. They uh, link to the transco and transco to disco and to the customer. And if you go to the value chain, not this one. Yeah. If we consider the value chain, you can see this is the whole uh, segment of value chain. You can relate because you all are into the utility segment. So the final invoice, you can see this is the customer and they are getting the final invoice. So this final invoice go to the retail customer, but that final invoice, whenever come before that, there are a lot of segments. Okay, so we have Genco, Transco, Disco, and retailer energy service providers, and then that link to the retailer. So how the energy moves, the energy is generated from the you know, Genco and it moved to the transmission. When it moved to the transmission, we have a meter. Okay, so the meter come into picture. So to capture how much energy we actually transmitted to the transmission unit. So that's how we capture through a meter, right? From when it transmitted the energy from transmission unit to the distribution unit, again, we have another meter, device two you can see here. Right, but you can observe there will be no meter in between the disco and the retailer, and we have direct a meter between the uh, disco means distribution unit and the retailer. Okay, once we capture all these readings, okay, so you can capture the meter readings here, meter reading results, then we generate the invoice and send to the uh, customer. So now the customer pays back the amount. Okay, now the customer pays back to any of the uh, energy desk or collective uh, collection units. Okay, so once it paid at the desk, it will again move back that energy, uh, the amount will flow back to the generation units, right? But uh, the main point here is whatever the prices the transmission company charge for the generation that is different from the transmission company charging to the distribution companies similarly the energy charges distribution company charges to the retailers is different than the they charging to the uh, the retailer company to the customers that means each segment we have a different different invoices different different collections and different different ledgers. Ledgers is nothing books where we enter whatever the incoming or outgoing is happening. Incoming outgoing in, in terms of uh, money or cash, okay? So from this segment, the SAP ISU create a whole segment. They create the solution for the utility value chain and they put multiple uh, Modules. Modules are the independent, uh, you can say, segments which creates a blocks for a solution. So uh, in SAP ISU, we have different modules and 
by combining those modules, you create a solution. So that's how we create a solution called ISU. That ISU is actually useful for all the utility companies. Okay. So if you enhance the whole ISU solution, so we can see this would be the modules here. In these modules, we have actually two types of modules. One are core modules, core modules which are already existing in the SAP system. And on the top of that, we created some new modules. We means SAP created some new modules which are only specific to ISU. Okay. So you can see FI finance, which is already there. On top of that, we create a account payable and receivable, which is FICA. Right. Similarly, we have HD. On top of that, we created the billing solutions. Okay, so invoicing and billing services are there. And in SAP ISU, we have SAP ISU billing and invoicing. Of the HD. HD is the sales and distribution, which is the core. On top of that, we develop a new solution, SAP ISU billing and invoicing. Okay, so that doesn't mean that HD is not there. If you want to create a service order or sales order, you can use HD. Okay, and through HD, we can create an invoice and that invoice also can be integrated to the uh, invoicing of ISU. Okay, similarly, we have uh, customer contract information services. Uh, currently, SAP CS is kind of obsolete. Now it is integrated to the CRM part. And some of the cases people are using the third party like Salesforce as the customer services. So this is the customer services, which is also introduced only for the uh, utility segment. Okay. And for the device maintenance, as we know, the uh, in the value chain, we need the devices. And for devices, we have a different segment or a model called SAP ISU DM device management. Right. And slowly, slowly, it will enhance with new uh, solutions. Now, in SAP, we have actually two kind of uh, stuff. One we call the modules and one we call the solutions. Now, combine multiple modules, right? So a solution is a specific for the industry. Like here, we are discussing about the utility industry. For the utility industry, we have a solution called ISU, Industrial Specific Solution for Utilities. So when we talk about solution, it holds multiple modules. Like in ISU, we have CS, Customer Services, Device Management, and Enhancement of Device Management, EDM, Energy Data Management, Billing, Invoicing, FICS, and Portal. Apart from that, <clears throat> in Billing, Invoicing, we integrate with RTP, Real-Time Pricing. FICA is enhanced to the technology particularly for the ABAPOS, BRF and BRF plus CS is linked to the CRM and all these things also integrate for a reporting site called BIBW and uh, business object we called BobJ. So those all stuff are integrated into one solution. So we call that SAP IS. Right. So there are similar type of solution for supply chain management and um, uh, like SAP Aerodynamics, SAP IS Retail. So there are a lot of solutions. More than 36 solutions are there for different, different organizations. Okay. If we put the all the modules in one, uh, uh, one segment, you can see this would be a top view. At the below, you can see all the SAP core modules are there. Okay. Like finance, HD, external systems, all the stuff are there. On top of that, you can find all the SAP ISU modules are there and they are integrated through a new model called customer services. And all these operations can be done a single, uh, we call the object that is called business partner. So business partner is the central component, which is also used in SD called as vendor. But in SAP ISU, we call it as business partner. Now that business partner is holding all the solutions, okay, throughout the modules. Now for the external modules, okay, for the external modules, we have different kind of integrations. 
So these integration points, we call them SAP PI process integrations, or these days that is replaced by SAP PO process orchestration, right? Some people also introduce a third kind of integration uh, software that is called MuelSoft, which is a cloud-based solution. Again, that will be integrating all these external models. Now, why these external models are required? Mostly in electricity, uh, we need the GIS stuff, like the particular location where we need to provide the services, where we need to replace the transformers, all those stuff. So those things require some external systems. So if anybody uh, move to any power station, you can see the SCADA system where you can see which transformers, uh, distribution transformers or ST, High, uh, high voltage transformers are active or inactive. So from there, we can understand how the maintenance can be done. Now, once the devices come into picture, the depreciation and appreciation will happen to those devices, right? So that's how we have a model called AM model, asset management and all those stuff. Okay. So these are the uh, modules and these are the structures. Any questions? Um, so just some background. So mostly in 1995, it started in July actually. People are thinking to create a solution for SAP utilities and they started with the solution. In 1999, they moved it to the production. They called it a, uh, currently there is a solution called Ariva. They call that Ariva. BA, Ariva, and in 2005, they introduced it at full fledged at SAP ISU. Okay, and slowly, slowly it develops. Currently, there are works going on to enhance SAP ISU with uh, S4 HANA. Okay, uh, particularly for the FICO, there is a solution already there existing S4 HANA with FICO, but for F SAP ISU, S4 HANA is not yet integrated, but some places what they do, they they make the database as S4 HANA and on the top of that, the same SAP ISU solution is there. Okay, so currently uh, uh, there are ECC system, ECC 6.0, ECC is ERP central component. And top of that, we are using the solution SAP ISU. And uh, all these modules are active based on the requirement of the client. Uh, ECC is called ERP central component. So mostly it's an architecture. So when we started the SAP, SAP started with R1 architecture. R1 architecture means there will be single system where the solution would be there. You can say a standalone system. We call that R1 architecture. In that system only, people can enter all the data, people can work, there are no integrations. And after R1 uh, uh, obsoleted, there is a new architecture come into picture called the R2 architecture. So in the R2 architecture, there will be centralized server, okay, which is integrated through the client's uh, systems. So R1, then it come to R2 architecture. Okay, so when active architecture come, it is more distributed. So people can use the system in different different departments and the solution can hold into a single system. But with R2 architecture, also the problem is happen remotely, we can't work. So there is another architecture come into picture that is called R3 architecture. That means there would be a data center where all the data are going to store and there will be a centralized server and there will be client servers. So the client uh, systems, uh, people work or the end user work on the client systems. It will hit to the server. Server based on the compilation, they store the data into the data center. Okay, so in-house data center, all those stuff are uh, under R3 architecture. Then there is a uh, concept called ECC, ERP centralized component. So ERP centralized component allows you to access the server through web, through uh, protocols like uh, TCP IP or through IP. That means you just need to put a GUI in your system, means graphical user interface to access the SAP system. And in there, you just need to put the internet uh, protocol address, the IP address, the server details, and you can access directly to the central component. 
and that central component, which is the data center right now, so they can give you all the information which are uh, available there, and that is same for other consumers as well. So that means if somebody is using, it will show you lock, and and that's how they synchronize with all the uh, customers, all the end users. So that's how the ERP centralized components come into picture. You can access through web and through IP. But again, the concept is changed. The right now, the concept is that cloud, right? So all this cloud. data is moved to the cloud. Uh, that means all the security, everything is uh, taken care by the cloud system. And you just need to access the system and put your solution there. And the end user, the customer, everybody can access the same system, the cloud system. So most of the utility companies, I don't know exactly about Liberty, but most of the company, they are using ECC 6.0. Some companies move to ECC 6.7.2, which is mostly beta type right now. So ECC 6.0 is the uh, current version of SAP ISU. 